What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Photo Booth 101 podcast. Today we have Tyler. Per usual, Hans is taking some time off dealing with his mechanical bull, but that's a completely different story. But Tyler, let's just dive right into it, bro. What do you do when you get a customer that's asking for a discount? Man, nowadays it's hard, but what I usually do is I just, you know, I I try to work with their budget. You know, I tell them, for example, if I'm doing a $300 all day rental and then I have my add-ons, so, you know, 25 for the prop table, $100 for the LED inflatable or the backdrop, you know, I'll just go and tell them like, if they're looking for a discount, I'll try to maybe take off some on travel, you know, cause I charge a dollar per mile. Um, I know it's not really like stuff that you would do charge per mile, but I travel all over Jersey, New York, uh, you know, Pennsylvania. I travel all over the tri-state. So New Jersey, it's worth it because I travel very far sometimes. Uh, I could take that off a little bit, but as far as my photo booth, I really like try to keep it firm. But if it's like, you know, someone I'm really trying to help and I'm like, you know what? Like I did good this month. You know, I I, I have morals, you know what I mean? And I understand that some people are struggling. So if, I, if I'm doing good that month and I did like six or seven events, you know, maybe that one person that's struggling, I'm like, you know what, I could cut a break and like give a discount. So, you know, maybe I'll take off, I'll, I'll give like that free upgrade for the prop table. But like, hey, listen, you know, I could take off $25 and just give you the prop table for free. You know, again, I have, you know, I have morals where I'm like, I could help you out and do that. But as far as like the photo booth, like that's my price, you know, I can't do that. Yeah. So I approach it a different way. You know, I was more like you when I first started, you, just, you know, you're a little bit hungrier, you, you know, you, you're, you're not completely where you want to be yet. So like you, you may give a discount to, to close the deal, but you know, as time goes on, I, I've realized like a little strategy here, man, it's when they ask for a discount, I'll ask, well, typically I'll, instead of me just saying yes, what I'll do is say, well, like, let me see if I can adjust your package and see if I can meet your price point. So let's just say they want a discount. And I'm like, well, what do you want to pay? And let's just say it's like $150 off the package. I'll say, okay, what we can do is remove the backdrop and then remove the boomerang gif and video feature. And then you're forcing them to see the value in it. Yeah, exactly. I, if, I, I, I've been trying to do some stuff like that. Actually, I had a situation where she was kind of like picking at certain things like, oh, I can't afford this. I can't afford that. And then um, she went and I took off the GIF boomerang and video feature from her and she's okay. So she paid. So again, that's only like a, to me that I think I told you last week, I charged like $25 for that extra. Yeah. So she, she was like nitpicking everything. So she only got the photo booth. She brought her own backdrop. I took off the, um, you know, the GIF boomerang and video mode. And then when I got to the event, she was like, I showed her, I told her, I said, okay, before I go and like, you know, just start the event, because it was a drop off. I said, before I go start this event, let me show you this real quick. So I showed her the GIF boomerang and video and it was for her birthday. It was for her 40th birthday party. And then she saw it. She's like, oh, I love that. That's so cool. My, my friends would like that and stuff like that. You know, this is a lady still in her thirties going into her forties. So she gets the, she gets the technology and all that stuff. So she's like, you know what? I'll do it. How much is it? And I guess she didn't remember my price. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get this lady. I said, $50 extra. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 in my head, I charged it $25 for the inconvenience. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to charge you $50. Cause it's the day of you're making me do all these changes. Even though all I have to do is like click, click, click. But yeah. Hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, man. So just to refresh everyone. So Tyler's talking about withholding features from the app, like the boomerang GIF and video features, and then charging customers to use it. It's like one of my favorite tricks in the book. Um, I'm actually planning on raising that set that that feature. I'm actually thinking of doing a 75 per uh extra experience. So if they want the boomerang, that's 75. If they want the video recording, that's 75. Um, so back to what I was saying. So when someone's asking me for a discount, you know, I, I think it's it it's kind of almost not like disrespectful, but it's kind of wrong to your customers that pay the full price and are happy with the services. And, um, I have no problem letting a lead go and not, not doing an event for somebody because it's not in their budget. Whenever yeah. someone says like, oh, my budget is this and that they're not saying I only have $300 to give you what they're telling you is I only want to spend 300 because I've been to plenty of events where they're like, Hey, my budget is $250. And I ended up getting the bookings and I show up to the party. They got a taco man. They got a DJ. Oh, absolutely. Got- oh, man. I, I could talk oh. about this all day, man. I got rigged at an event in November and I'll never forget this. I really will never forget this lady. 
just for safety purposes, because I don't know if she has me on social media, I'm not going to say her name. Let's call her, let's get, give her a name. Just give her let's a name. Call her, let's call her Joanne, okay? So Joanne went and she booked me back in July. I was new. Again, I was just one month at that time into the photo booth business. Like you said, I was hungry. I wanted the event. And she went and she booked me and she told me, hey, this is actually an engagement party, less than 50 people, you know, it's at this venue. And, you know, now ever since I actually look up the venues and I make sure like they're telling the complete truth. Like I have to be like that now because of what happened. Um, she's like, it's at a small venue and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, whatever. I gave her my price. I think at the time it was like, I gave her like a $200 all day rental and she added it on the prop table. So it was like 225 but originally, if it was a wedding, I would have charged maybe like 500 Long story short, I get to the event, 150 plus people. The chandelier was bigger than my bedroom, bigger than my apartment. It was huge. <laughs> the, the centerpieces were like like, tr- like the size of like a mini tree, like one of those little mini trees on the middle of the table, like all diamonds and stuff. I come to find out it's a whole wedding. And I did confront her about it. I did. I was like so mad. And I was like, going to just walk away. I was like, you know what? I'll just give this lady her money back and call it a day. But my wife kind of was like, no, like, let's see. Like, maybe she has an explanation for this. Oh, yeah. You know, this is like a, a little, uh, this is an engagement party because she's, a, um, oh, man, I forgot her nationality. But that's not the point. The point is, is that, you know, she's like, in my culture, we do this as an engagement party. This isn't even the wedding. Like, we'll book you for the wedding. And I'm like, this is the wedding because when they were doing the speeches and stuff, we're like they were like talking like the speeches. The family was like, oh, we're happy you guys are married now. Congratulations to the newlyweds. And I'm looking at her like, you're a liar, man. You're a liar, <laughs> liar. I was like, you know what, whatever it is, what it is. But now, what I do is I look up the venue. You know, I I look into it before I give a price. You know, if I say, hey, what's the venue? You know, and I just boom, give my price from there. But I've been following more of your lead now where I'm doing like a $400 all day rental. And I'm like, here's my add-ons before I was like making different packages for all these different customers. And I was like getting myself confused a little bit because then I would like tell this one customer one price and then the next customer another price. And I was like, you know, I need to just set my prices and just be firm. Like weddings is this price. Sweet 16s is this price. Um, You know, uh, birthday parties and like smaller private parties are this price. And then they could do the add-ons. So For example, if it's like a private party or like a birthday party, I'll do like a $300 all day rental with the add-ons. If Mm. it's a wedding, I'll do, I mean, if it's like a sweet 16 or like a quinceanera, something within like a little bit over a birthday party, I'll do like a uh, a $400 all day rental with with the add-ons, whatever they want to add. And if it's a wedding, it's $500 with the add-ons. So basically I categorize it by the, by the, uh, the occasion of the event. Cause I feel like weddings are more like, well, if I'm a, if if I'm a customer and I say, why is the price difference? What what what, what do you say? No, no, no. Because I don't I don't post my prices. So like if if mm. I if I, if I ask the client, hey, what's your event? And they say, oh, it's a wedding. I already know in my head. Okay, they're I'm giving them the four the five hundred dollar all day rental with the add ons. Gotcha. They, they don't know my prices. My prices are are to, between myself and you know the the customer when I announce it. If someone reaches out to me tomorrow says I have a sweet sixteen, I know okay, it's a four hundred dollar uh, rental with the add-on. So I'll tell them, Hey, $400 all day rental. And then here's the add-ons you can add on. You're not worried of doing somebody's wedding, charging them the wedding price. And then they reach out for a little backyard party and then you give them a lower price. I would just tell them that's my prices for my birthday parties. That's cheaper. Most of the time, those are events are smaller. They're less hours. You know, I get what you're saying, but I don't, I've had something similar to this situation where I charged a lady for her 40th birthday party, 400. And then she actually reached out to me for her corporate job, which was the Dunkin' Donuts event I did. And I charged them $1,500. She didn't question it. It's just, it was, it's categorized. You're so lucky. lucky. You you know how this business goes too. You know, there's, there's some people that would have made that like a big deal, but see, this is what I tell everyone. You can run your business like that. It also wasn't her money. You know, it's Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. True. True. I love, but I, I love this business because you can do it your way where you don't post your prices and that could be a benefit to where, you know, you could have that corporate charge them a little bit more. I personally just like to have one price for everybody. I, I can care less if it's for Nike or whoever, um, mm-hmm. or if it's just for, you know, just a 15 person birthday party for us, it's the same, mm-hmm. but um, back to what I was going to say, man, back to the, the discounts, honestly, man, 
it is a great position to say no to someone when they're asking for a discount. And I hope that anyone watching this gets to a point where your business is so successful to where, you know, you're like us, you get more than two to three leads a day and you can be comfortable to say no. And that, that is honestly in this business, it's not always about saying yes. And I'm sure yeah. you've heard this too. It's, it's, it's having the the guts and sticking by your prices and, and having some kind of um, dignity to say no. You will have people, bro. I had someone last week saying they wanted everything. They wanted the backdrop, the prop table. They wanted the attendant and their budget. They're like, my budget's 400 bucks. Well, you know, honestly, what I do, I, I try to help all the customers, whether they're on a budget. If they can't afford me, then I know there's someone out there that they can't afford mm -hmm. because not everyone has the same prices. Like you said, everyone's prices are different. So what I do is I try to help out my fellow peers from the photo booth 101 chat. If I'm in a situation where I know that, you know, I can't, I don't want to take the event. Maybe it's just like too, too less of a budget for me. Like it's just something that's not worth it for me personally with the travel and all that stuff. I'll reach out to the photo booth 101 chat or to someone that I know who's in the photo booth world. Hey, listen, here's the client's budget. You know, let's say it's $400, right? And I just don't want to take that up, take that event up. You know, I might tell that person, Hey, let, could you white label it for me? Or can you just do the event, take it and just give me like a 50, $50 to a hundred dollars or whatever cut. You know, if they're willing to do it, yeah. I've had situations where there's been people, you know, in the photo booth one-on-one chat that I've gave events to, and they were willing to take that $300 event to so some people. And this is not because that's their price. It's just that some people, this is just a side hustle. This is just some extra money. If they could make two or $300, they're hundred percent happy with that. Absolutely. In my eyes, I'm not happy with those prices. To me, I need that $500, $400 consistency coming in because I'm trying to make this photo booth business my life. You know, I'm trying to make this where I want to be in 10 years. You know, this is what I want my career to be. You know, I don't need to work. I don't want to work in an office or whatever no more. I want to be able to do this full time. So to me, I need those big high end events, those big clients. I need the Nike, the Dunkin Donuts. I need those consistently, you know, and I need big weddings and sweet 16s and stuff like that. You know, the birthday parties are nice. They're beautiful. But those are most people who are on a budget who are trying to less spend, spend less than a thousand dollars for the whole party itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it is what it is. So back back to what I was saying though. Um, it, it's a good place to say no. Is that a Krabby Patty? That's a burger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife gave it to me. I saw. I said I'll eat after the podcast. But oh man, love that, Monse. Where's my burger? <laughs> She's, you know, you're just gonna see the burger. You're gonna see the sandwich in your face. <laughs> Tyler's wife. We're, we're recording the podcast. Tyler's wife just handed, opened the door and handed him a, a Krabby Patty. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I was gonna say like it's a good place to say no, but like you, you've heard me say this. You should never turn down a lead. Like Tyler, like Tyler said, like find someone that can do it. And then also too, like let's just say, and I'm gonna preach. I'm you, you, Tyler. You're gonna hear me explode for the next month and a half about the pickup. But this is, if someone can't afford your, your rental prices, you should offer a pickup option where they come to you, pick up your equipment, they set it up themselves, but they can have it for a minimum of 200 bucks. You're gonna be so proud of me, bro, when I tell you this. I'm, oh, in, I'm, in, talk, I'm in talks with someone about the pickup right now, a, a client, I'm, I'm willing to do it, man. And my mother-in-law is willing to let, let them come in front, of, in front of her house and I just drop it off in front of the house. They pick it up in front of my mother-in-law's house and they're going to handle it, but it's my baby, man. And I'm, 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 I got to latch. I got to let go, bro. I got to let go of this. But I'm, I'm going to do, I'm talking to her about it. Cause she, this is one of those events talking about discounts where she's kind of on a budget. She lives literally the, the venues 10 minutes from my, my mother-in-law's house. And I'm like, you know what? And it's literally all she wants a photo booth. She has a backdrop. She has all that stuff. She doesn't want a prop table. She says she has her own prop table. It is just photo booth. So I'm like, okay, I could do 299 all day rental for that. But I said, I'm offering this new thing to pick up. Bro, she's like, I could do that. She's like, do you have a video to like show me how to do it? And I'm like, I could get you one. Don't worry. So either I'm going to make it or I know you have one. So yeah. I need that. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> hey, whatever you need. The the pickup, I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that just shop off price. Yeah. It's insane. Like Monte can probably vouch. Like we're doing more pickups than we are drop-offs. And you know, at a 199 price, I mean, I don't care who you are. If you reach out to a photo booth company and you you tell them that you can't afford 199 maybe you shouldn't be throwing a party and that's just the honest my honest opinion look a photo booth is a luxury and it's a luxury if you're trying to rent from us that all you'll need is 200 and it saves so much time think about think about this the time that 
and look, and I'm saying 199, we're not making templates unless we're getting paid for it. We're not giving them internet if it's not paid for. So 199, literally just photo booth, photo option. So we've we've tallied up the the, the most expensive pickup we had was a hundred, no, 480. That's what the backdrop prop table, and we're literally just loading it up, man. It's the easiest money you can make. Like, so you don't make the template for them, or you just do, do charge the them twenty bucks. So it's one ninety nine all day rental, but then an extra twenty dollars for the template. Twenty bucks for the template, twenty dollars to activate the internet. Um, Boomerang and GIF is an extra fifty dollars. The backdrop is seventy. Prop table is fifty. The Jackery seventy five. Oh, so uh, this one, these one, this one ninety nine adds up. It's not just one ninety nine. Oh, it's not just one ninety nine. Wow. So you end up sometimes with you said like four hundred dollars off of yeah. one drop. On average, it's probably around two fifty three. So you found, so you wait. You found a way to basically have someone do your job and still be able to do the add ons, and then just go and set it up. And <laughs> yeah. So the money. So the money that they're in my in my am like the money that they're saving. They're saving money. Yes, I'm making less money, but it's freeing my time up because. Think about it. I'm not, I don't have to pack up the equipment in my car. I yeah. don't have to drive there. I don't have to set it up. I don't have to drive away. I don't have to come back and then I don't have to break it down. Then I don't have to drive home. That's saving me those seven things there. So it's huge. Yeah. And like, look, dude, look, the digi booth, we're using the digi booth and um, we are using curator. Uh, we're probably going to try to switch over to snap pick for the pickup. So we're not using Luma booth for the pickup. It's just, it's just not practical just from the layout and the flow of it. It's way easier with these other softwares. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that that's, that's coming down the line, but um, we do have a, a sponsor here, Tyler. Do we? It, yeah. It's the photo booth one-on-one mentor group chat. We have a pre-recorded message um, and you're actually the star of the, I think you might be the star of the commercial. Hey, if you guys are in the photo booth world and are interested in joining the mentor group, please feel free right here. <sighs> That's a freaking coat rack. Come on. <sighs> right here. The mentor group guys, we're here to help five mentors, free giveaways monthly, everything you need to know, all the knowledge you'll get in the mentor group. Sign up today. One ninety nine lifetime membership guys. It is is worth it join now all right drew how'd you like that one huh photo wow. 101 mentor group where can i sign up in photo 101.com like in the i description. said in the description five, in the description. five mentors five mentors but all right so anyways i did promise uh people in the last podcast drew you weren't here and i know you saw it so hope you liked it uh me and hans hold hold it down you know held it down so anyways uh I did promise I was going to answer three questions in the podcast from the last one. And I was going to mention on this one and I was going to shout out those people who did ask questions. I see we only got two, which is great. People still asked. So I'm going to say it right here. We'll uh, put their name up in the, the link somewhere. Uh, so Tito, the ducky 2190 said, can you show how to tape down wires at an event? So obviously we can't show you, but we could explain um, what I do. I don't know about you, Drew, is I put, the wires in front of my booth because if it's for the backdrop it's if it's for the led inflatable it's a different story but if it's for the backdrop uh my digi booth has like that little like gap part in the at the bottom like the little hole where the wires actually go so i put it i'll straighten them out and then i see a lot of people they'll take their tape and just tape it straight down i did that my first event that was the worst mistake i did because when i pulled that tape off it started to close in the tape started to stick together and then like I was, I was, it was so hard to pull the tape off the wires. So then what I started doing, I had saw a video from you that how, how you explained it is you put tape like going this way, like. Oh, so across. if you have a line, you go, you go like this. Yeah, you go, yeah, you go across. So if you have a, if you have the line of the, of the wires, you go across first. So you put maybe like five or six pieces of tape, like, you know, maybe two or three inches away from each other. And then after that, then tape it across all the way. And that saves me so much time. So that's how I tape everything down. And then obviously the rest, the rest of the residue of the wires, because some of the wires are long, I'll just hide it behind the backdrop and then, you know, just, you know, tuck it under. If it's my LED inflatable, it's a lot more easier. I don't use a lot of tape when I do the inflatable. Well, we should say I, too, it's gaff tape. It's gaff tape. Yes. Yeah. So don't get regular duct tape. Don't get regular scotch tape or any of that stuff that's sticky <laughs> and it'll ruin your wires completely especially duct tape or gorilla tape or whatever that's called that will ruin your wires you have to get gaffer tape 
Where can you find Gaffer Tape? Your local music store. Uh, I know a lot of the places in the U.S. have like guitar centers or like uh, um, Sam Ashes or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, or you could get it at Walmart, Amazon. They usually sell Gaff Tape. Yeah. Um, Amazon, to... Amazon, Amazon's the cheapest. Amazon's the cheapest, but I go, I go to Guitar Center. It's right down the street from my house. So I'll leave a link in the description too for the. Uh, so as, it's, actually, as far as, it's in every video. It's down in the description. So as far as my LED inflatable, it's a little more easier because if you have the inflatable house, I usually put my table in front of it. So a good hack here, so you don't have, so you can hide your wires, is put your table inside your LED inflatable in front of the in front of the booth, and just have your table cover and then just hide everything under, you know, the under the wires. Uh, un the wires under the table so that's about it for that and then the other question and i'll let you real quick, real quick i i do want to add a, uh, some two cents here because the way we tape up the wires with for me for a drop off is different than when, when we're there when we're there we don't leave any slack because we're not going to move the booth back but when we do a drop off right you have your extension cord plugged into the wall then you have the cable then you have the booth what we do is we leave some extra slack under the booth just in case they move it back, which sometimes they do. That's if you don't smart. leave any slack and it's completely tight and if they move it back, it can unplug it. And that could be a huge issue. So it is a call. Honestly, I, sh I should probably make a video on this. I think this is a great subject. No, that's so yeah, that's kind of cool. how we do it. And then another hack is um, sometimes we will bring the red carpet whenever we can. And we put the, we put the red carpet over the, ex uh, the cables over the, the extension cord. So you could tape it, you could tape it how Tyler said, and then just lay the carpet over it to kind of help with the look. And um, people don't step over it and stuff like step on it and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. there is two, I don't know if you've ever seen it. There's actually like this thing on Amazon. It's like a rubber extension cord hider. I'm mm -hmm. kind of thinking investing in that, man. I think those are good for your house too. I actually have one for my TV. Cause I might, I have my TV on the wall and mm -hmm. I have that like rubber thing that goes uh, like hides in between my TV and I have it like taped onto the wall. So those are pretty cool. Um, so Tito, the ducky two, one, nine, zero. Great question. Uh, and just this other one, I'll let you handle this one from Mando, the human. These are, these are awesome usernames. Dude, for real. What, what website platform do you guys use? I use Wix and does HoneyBook inter, uh, integrate with your website properly? Take it away. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, we use GoDaddy to, for our websites and, uh, you can integrate HoneyBook. HoneyBook is a CRM, a client relation management tool. Um, I think Han said he's going to probably make a video pretty soon about it. HoneyBook is literally a place where you can get your contract signed digitally. You can, people can book you, you can take payments. It, it's love, love HoneyBook it. is amazing in I the description it. too. If you guys want to get 25% off in the description, you can sign up for HoneyBook. Um, but yeah, you can integrate HoneyBook into your website. You can also use it on Wix. You should be able to use it on Squarespace. Yeah. And um, if you go to someone's website and you fill out a booking form, that booking form is actually HoneyBook if they integrate it. And it's just a, a one-stop shop, but I personally like GoDaddy. Um, Tyler, what do you guys use for your, for your rental company or plan on using? Uh, well, for for the um, uh, for the CRM, right? Yeah, okay. but like 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 you 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 guys are for the website when you guys plan to make the website. What are you going to use? Do you have any? Uh, Go GoDaddy. Yeah, actually, I've been very lazy right now. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. I have the web. I have like you know where you could like set up your website, but you haven't like launched it or something yet. Like you're just playing. Like you're creating it. Mm -hmm. I'm, in that, I'm in that process right now, but I've been running everything as far as my business through Facebook, Instagram, and that's just what's been working for me, but the website is coming out. Bro, um, we, I'm, I'm using I, I think it's a big, I think it's a big deal, bro. I mean, yes, you should have a website. You should have had it ASAP, but bro, hey, you, you, can shoot, you can shoot me for it. You can shoot bro, me no, for no, it. No, no, no. I'm here to praise you, man. I mean, uh, I know how busy you are, but still you can, you can find time to make a website, but bro, $55,000 in less than one year with no website. Look, I don't cuss a lot. I try not to cuss, but man, that's fucking insane. Well, that shows a lot. That 50, shows a lot. $52,000. I got some deposits coming in to make it 55 soon. I'm, I'm, I just did some accounting today before I uh, got on the podcast. I started looking at my Excel sheet. I'm like, okay, this person owes me a deposit. This person owes me a deposit. I did the math. I have a yearly one at the end. So I put what I made every month and I just add every month up. So we're going on, we're going off 55 soon. So Bro. we're 50, 50, almost $53,000 now with deposits. That and might, that might be, that might be the thumbnail. $55,000, 10 months with no website. I don't know, man. The, the, to me, to me, I think it's, it's really, really cool because when you get your website and I know you're going to crush it and 
an another piece of work for you to do or anyone watching is once you get your website, start working on Google SEO mm -hmm. really quick, Google search optimization. It's literally when someone types into Google photo booth, rental, whatever, whatever area, if you have good ranking for your website, Google will promote your business on the first page. So imagine that. Imagine every time someone in LA types in photo booth, Los Angeles, you're on the first page that alone can, can make you a full-time photo boother. Yep. And the fact that, that you grow, the that, fact that you're going to kill it in New Jersey too. I, I have a feeling in your area, it's going to be super easy to rank. Yeah. Well, what I like going back to HoneyBook is that a couple nights ago, well, a couple of days ago, I woke up to an event that I was booked for January, 2025. And I didn't believe it. I was like, this cannot be real. And you know, the, I got the phone number to the vet, to the customer and stuff. And I reached out to them because I was just in so disbelief because I've gotten booked through HoneyBook already since I've started it. But like through like, um, like I'll send them like uh, when someone asks me, like I'll send them my HoneyBook, my HoneyBook's on my, uh, my, now my link now, cause I have a tree link now for my Instagram. So I have the HoneyBook there. I have everything ready to go. So when someone booked me and I saw 2025, I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I reached out to him like, Hey, is this, a, is this like date accurate? Like, I just wanted to confirm like this date's real. She's like, yeah, no, this is for my wedding in 2025. I'm like, dang. The, but that's what put in my head. Like the fact that I got booked without even doing anything. She paid a deposit. I woke up hundred extra dollars in my bank account. And I was like, and this is for next year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that's insane. How, how HoneyBook just does everything for, it's like a robot, man. That thing's, I was like, and I did tell myself, why did I not do this earlier? I just started doing this like recently now. Same thing with the website. I know when I, like you said, when I get the website, I'm going to kill it. And I'm, and I'm probably going to think to myself five months from now, when I have it launched already, oh, why didn't I do this earlier? Yeah. But like, like we talked about on the Instagram lives and stuff, you know, last year I was treating it more like a, let's see how this works out to knowing how much I've done, knowing how far I've came in this business to, okay, now this year is time to really like put the puzzle together now. Love it. So. Yeah. It's a, pro it's, it's a process, man. I think honestly, you've, you're a lot farther than most people in their photo booth journey in the first year. I think the first couple of years, everyone's still trying to learn and test the waters. You're at a point already. Like I would say you're like at a two, two and a half year you know, like, like the money you're making, right? Like you're planning on scaling, you're adding all of this stuff, but um, let's move it forward, man. Let's, let's talk about the gossip. There's something that happened and it, it in the net, uh, the photo with the one-on-one networking group chat, uh, long story short, you guys, um, I don't want to say her name, but it's somebody in the group chat said they got a message from a lead and the lead was telling them, uh, giving them business advice. Some of that advice was, don't talk about your deposit. Don't say deposit when it's actually a non-refundable retainer. They're basically saying you're using the wrong terminology. Then this person also told the photo booth owner in the networking chat that they need to write a contract before they can collect a deposit. Tyler, what are your thoughts on this situation, bro? Like what's your, what's your two cents here? I, I saw the messages and I, like I said, I don't really talk too much in the photo booth one-on-one -on -one chat because I feel like when I do talk, it's either people bashing me about the freaking coat rack, and I didn't <laughs> want to bring I didn't want to bring it up in this podcast, but it's about the damn coat rack, or it's a you know when I do talk, it's about you know stuff that's important. You know, I don't try to get too much into the the cheese may let's call it that. Uh, but when I did see this, it really caught my attention, and I was at work when I saw those messages, and I was like, oof, that's that's bad, man. Here's to everyone who's listening, who's a a future client for a photo booth owner, or if you're a photo booth owner yourself, I, especially when I saw it, I was like, wow, I, I got to put this in good words. Um, do not try to correct someone who's a business owner because they know what they're talking about. If they didn't know what they were talking about. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to do the job right now. Not saying that, you know, the customer is fully wrong because we still have to honor the whole customer's always right thing. You know, I, I try to give them a credit. So man, how do I say this? It's a tough one, right? It's a tough one, man. It's like, I could saw, I could see the client. I, I'm trying to look at both points of views here, but I'm going to talk as I'm going to think as a photo booth owner right now. Okay. Cause that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to talk about. Majority of the people who are listening are photo booth owners. If your client corrects you, don't give them an attitude. Don't yell at them. Don't start, you know, bashing at them, whatever. You know, to me, I say non-refundable deposit. Now, if she or he had said a deposit, 
no, then I, they said non-refundable and the person yeah, exactly. So if they had, but I'm, I'm saying I'm thinking as the customer now for a minute, if they had said deposit, then I would have understood why the customer had corrected them. But since that she or or he had said non-refundable deposit, then you know the customer is just being an ass. You know, again, yeah, part of my, they're just being an ass. I talked to Monson. I said it's the equip. What that that lead did to the uh, to the photo booth owner was like correcting someone when they spell their t h e r e versus t h e i r. You know what they meant. You know what it means. You exactly. Don't to... You know what they meant, and and you know what got me. You know what got me was the fact that she said that you had to write the contract before I send you the deposit. That I don't agree on because I've had plenty of customers who have trusted us enough to send us the hundred dollar deposit. And matter of fact, there's been times where they would send us a hundred dollar deposit and I wouldn't send the contract until the next day because maybe I've had customers reach out to me on Instagram at 10 o'clock at night, like truthfully, like at 10 o'clock at night, say, Hey, I want to book you for my daughter's sweet 16. And I'm like, okay, let's lock in your date. Send me the hundred dollar deposit. And I'll, I promise I'll send you the contract tomorrow. They've sent it, send a hundred dollars. And cause they see my stuff on Instagram. They know we're not, we're not scammers. Again, they send and what's important is they trust you. Think about it, guys. Tyler, no website. They're giving deposits. It's because Tyler and his wife are in the videos. You go to the Instagram. You see the face. They hear him on the phone if they call. They trust him. This is another reminder to to be a part of your brand. No, absolutely, you? absolutely. So, so sorry, yeah, man. No, continue. I, I just I just no, have no, to no, mention it's, it. It's, no, it's all good. I I do jump on the phone with these clients. So actually, this was a client that I did jump on the phone with at ten o'clock at night. I said, "Here, let's jump on the call." I told her what I was going to offer her. I was like, listen, I'm actually getting ready for bed right now. Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, but if you want to lock in your date to make sure 100% like you're locked in, you can send a $100 deposit and I'll send you the contract in the morning. Like my word. And it was a Friday going into Saturday. So there was nothing for me to do Saturday morning. Uh, she's like, okay, no problem. She sent it. I kept my word. I woke up seven o'clock in the morning, contract made, boom, sent. And actually I could have done it on my phone because I could do it on my phone. But, you know, this is before I had the whole uh, honey book and stuff like that. So you know, she, she trusted us to do it. So I don't believe in that whole, like, Oh, you have to write the contract out before you send the deposit. Honestly, I actually like it vice versa. I'd rather get the money right there. Right. When you're talking to the customer where the conversation is fresh, Yep. because that's when the customers, the mo here's how I say it. Here's how I'll put it. This is when I think the customer is most excited to book you is when they first reach out to you. And when they, when you first, uh, when the conversation's still fresh, because if the conversation, you know, you start talking to them, okay, send a hundred dollar deposit or you can send it by next week or something like that. You're giving the client more time to shop around. I think it's best if you don't give the client more time to shop around and say, Hey, I, yeah, we're available this day. It's a hundred dollar deposit. You can send it right now. You can send it within the next 10 minutes or whatever. Don't give them too much time to start shopping around. And here's what we can offer you at this price, whatever. Oh, the minute they say, Oh, I love that price. That's great. Let's do it get the hundred dollar deposit because they might tell you, Oh, that's great. Let's do it. And then if you give them a couple days or a couple hours, they might go on Instagram since they've been looking, let's go back to Google SEO. They've been looking photo booths near me. Now a bunch of stuff on their feed start popping up photo booth, photo booth, photo booth, a bunch of different photo booth owners come out. They happen to just say, Oh, let me reach out to this one. They reach out, they get a better price. Boom. You just lost or, that lead. Or maybe, maybe they spoke to two other photo booth owners before you, or they called somebody and they didn't pick up you're giving them time for that other person to call them back or, you know, or to reach out and be like, Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll meet you at your price or I'll match whoever you're getting a quote from. And people will do that, man. Business, business. Sometimes, and sometimes just to save 20 or $30. Exactly. It, it's insane. I've had clients reach back out to me like, Hey, we actually went with someone cheaper. And I actually asked these clients mm -hmm. like, okay, well, what's their price? Maybe I could try to compete with them before you sign a deal with them. And they're like, oh, I would, let's say, for example, it was 400. They're like, oh, they're charging me 350. I'm like, you're really going to leave me for $50? And then I'll have to go and be like, okay, you know what? Yep. Cool. Enjoy. Yeah, for sure. And um, back to backtrack. So <clears throat> the the problem I have, I agree with the person that uh, the the lady that reached out and said, you, you need to not say non-refundable deposit because deposit means you're going to get the money back. And she's right. The technical term, it is retainer. So if anyone's watching it, if you want, if you don't want this to ever happen to you, never call it a deposit. You can, but if you do make sure it's non-refundable and just be aware, the real term is retainer, but most customers don't know what a retainer means. 
So that's why we use the, the term sometimes non-refundable deposit because that makes more sense. So that's my two cents on that. But to I agree with everything you said and it's apparent that you've watched a lot of my videos because you literally said word for word what I've been preaching. Um, get your money first. Contract can co come second. And <clears throat> there are some I've, people- I've been, oh. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I've been watching your videos <laughs> for like well, two years, two years at least now. <laughs> But it's, it's completely true, man. Some people actually prefer to give you their money first. They say, I just want to lock it in. Send me that contract next week. I don't care. I just want to make sure we're good. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people like that. And you're, you'd are you be an idiot to be like, um, you know, sorry, I don't want your money yet. Let me, let me, let me draw this up for you really quick. But let, let, let me think as a customer, let's think as customers for a minute too. There are times, you know, and maybe not a photo booth situation, but like, I get why some customers mindset is I want the contract first because they want to read what they're getting into before they give you money. So mm -hmm. I do understand both sides. I can't really agree or disagree with either side, but as a photo booth owner, listen, send me the hundred dollars, let's lock you in. And then I'll send you the paperwork right away. And then everything else good to go. At least give a verbal or something in text message or in writing through an email or through Instagram or wherever you're chatting with these people word for word what you're offering them hey i'm offering you the led inflatable with the photo booth gif boomerang and video mode and this and this and this send me the hundred dollar deposit and i'll send you a contract that says all of that so at least you have something in writing so they feel more secure like okay they know what the, I, i'm gonna give them the hundred dollars and i know from this text message they're offering me all of this stuff and then it's gonna be on the contract later you know absolutely yeah so i uh sorry just to say i don't want you guys to to, to take uh what i just said there to end we will do contracts first only if they request it, just like Tyler mentioned. That's the only case where we'll do it. And sometimes corporate does want a contract first, but yeah, I would say, bro, 95% of our events, we're getting the deposits first. Maybe the other five, it's requested or it's needed. So, I mean, it's just one of those things, man, like that, that person kind of was out of bounds for sitting there trying to tell them. And I think the best thing she could have done to that lead is just been like, thanks for the advice. And then book the event. But like the fact that that person was already kind of being like that already, uh, Hans and I were in the chat. We're like, you may want to pass on this. I don't know if you want that headache, you know, like yeah. imagine, imagine what they're going to be like when they get the contract. They're going to, or when, or when you're at the event, some listen, if you I, even get there, if you even get there, this person probably will, will dissect your contract word for word and then send you a PDF with it highlighted and what changes to make. Like they, like, to, like they used to do in high school, the dude, teachers cross it off instead of, like you said, instead of saying T-H-E-I-R, it'll be if, like, what if they did that and then return it to you with a grade? <laughs> Honestly, I would just block them. I would just block them be like, have fun with whoever books you because they're going to have a, they're going to have a ride. Hans, bro, Hans said it best. Um, he goes, maybe you just respond like, oh, thanks for reaching out. Um, so we just double checked and we are booked on that day. And I was like that. I'm like, damn, Hans is cold blooded, man. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I'm at the point now and I'm glad I am where I get there's been times I've already either passed events on and took the hundred dollar like, uh, you know, referral or I literally just told them like, hey, I, I'm booked this day. Like I can't do it. Like, because I've had certain clients reach out through like Facebook marketplace, those cheap spots, you know, sometimes even Instagram and they're like, Hey, here's my budget. Like I've literally had clients reach out to me, not even ask me for my prices. They're like, my budget's $200, you know, and I'm only looking for the photo booth. I even had clients even tell me because some clients aren't stupid. They know that the photo booth that we have is an iPad photo booth. They're like, I just need the iPad with the, with the light. And I'm like, is that all? That's all you need. You just need the photo booth with the iPad with the light. I said, so you want me to just take the iPad and then put like, put a light? You want me to go like that? Like, <laughs> just what that that's happened to you? Yes, on Facebook. They want the stand. They want the shell with the iPad, right? They want the shell with the iPad, but the way that they explained it was like, I want the iPad with a light. Interesting. I, I swear to God, this was. What, on do, you, what do you respond? The the. Do you just say I, like, told, I told them I told them our no I, I literally just went into detail I'm like our photo booth is a digital photo booth with an LED ring light I said there's no I said yes you know I had to be honest with them because they knew I was like yes the photo booth inside is an iPad but the software is a whole different monster I said that's a soft and I didn't mention the name you know I didn't say oh I have salsa you know because then they start looking into it I'm like my software is connected to the iPad Love with that. the ring, with the ring light 
Um, and yes, we could provide you just that, the stand, you know, with the ring light and the, and the iPad photo booth. You know, at that point, they know it's an iPad. So I'm like, it's an iPad photo booth. And then we could give you it for like a two ninety nine all day rental. And then if you want to add stuff on, you add it on. She's like, yeah, no, that's too expensive for me. My budget's like, I think she's, I swear to God, bro. She's like, my budget's one fifty. I'm like, and it was in New York city, which I have to take the bridge to get there in like the 16th floor. I had to take like an elevator. She explained everything to me, what she needed. And I'm like, yeah, no, unfortunately we can't do that. Nor I don't think anyone I know I could pass you to could do that. So unfortunately we won't be able to do this. Yeah. That's not even worth it. Cause I told her, and you know what, you know, what's crazy. I got to the point now where when clients reach out to me on, like I did a Facebook, uh, not Facebook, an Instagram ad a couple like a week or two ago. And you know, you get a lot of DMS from that. Like some people are just trying to get to the point, like, Hey, what's your prices? So sometimes I'll just, just a question. And I, I found the way almost to the point where at least in my case, cause again, I don't tell my prices where I could kind of like, I, I want to say hack the system here, like hack the pricing system. And here's, let me explain. I started telling clients and I'm starting to see like, wow, I could get away with this. I think um, I tell them, I'm like, give me a realistic, th these are the words. And I even told Hans this and he said it works for him for one lead last week. I said, give me a realistic budget you were trying to work with for your photo booth, to, like for the photo booth. Some clients will go for like a birthday party and they're like, oh, my clients, be, my, my numbers between 700 to 800 dollars. I'm like, OK, I could do 800. <laughs> I'm like, OK, I could do 800 dollars and then I'll give them my whole whole rundown. Even though that was really worth like. Four or something for like a little birthday party. Yeah, I disagree. I don't I don't like that strategy. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I was I mean, I know a lot of people that do that. I just, it's just not my cup of tea. And I, I, I can see you can make a lot more money doing that. I just don't want to do the event and then them find out somehow that the price was jacked up. I mean, I'm, bro, I'd be paranoid. I'd be paranoid. New, New, Jer New Jersey, man, you could get away with some stuff here, bro. It's insane, man. I'm yeah. just, it's not a California thing, but. It's wild. That's wild, man. But um, <laughs> what do you got coming up, man? Before we sign up, like what, what's, what's going on? What's new in your life before we, uh, we hop off? So Sunday, actually, I'm going to WrestleMania, so I'm not booked this weekend. Uh, Saturday is also WrestleMania, so it's a two-night event. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm not going Saturday or Sunday. I mean, I'm, I'm going Sunday. I'm not going Saturday. So Saturday, I'm watching at home. Sunday, I'm going to go in person to Philly. But then um, next week, the following week, uh, Sun, I believe it's the 14th. Yeah, Sunday the 14th, I'm booked for my bouncy house. And then Saturday, I'm booked with the photo booth. Love it, bro. Getting busy, man. So that's going to wrap it up for this podcast. As always, go in the description. You can find Tyler's social media profile. So if you want to follow Tyler's rental company, TKR Events, as long as everything else, as long as the Photo Booth 101 mentor group chat, our website, the Amazon links, all down below. Thank you guys for watching. And I can't believe we built a following here. And we do have some Photo Booth merch coming up. Hopefully next podcast, when Hans is here, we can reveal the shirts and, and announce where you guys can get some Photo Booth 101 University podcast merch. So thank you guys. God bless. We'll see you next week.